Well, thank you for joining us today for Cafe Jesus Daily Word. We're already 17 days. 17 days of July is already gone. We just had the 4th of July weekend the other day. Amazing time runs along. In front of us, behind us, whether we're ready or not. Well, today, we have a recap recapitulation in um, Chronicles of David's reign in Israel. So without further ado, let's get to today's audio. And before we do, let's ask the Lord to bless our time. Father God, move me aside, Lord. Speak directly to the hearts and the minds and the ears of each listener who is tuned in, that we might learn something and grow and emulate Jesus all the days of our life, that we pray in your holy name, Lord Jesus, amen. Okay, let's get to it. Hopefully there's no commercial, but I kind of doubt that. But Chapter right. 11. All Israel came together to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, even while Saul was king, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord your God said to you, You will shepherd my people Israel, and you will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, he made a compact with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. As the Lord had promised through Samuel, David and all the Israelites marched to Jerusalem, that is Jebus. The Jebusites who lived there said to David, You will not get in here. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, the city of David. David had said, Whoever leads the attack on the Jebusites will become commander-in-chief. Joab, son of Zeruiah, went up first, and so he received the command. David then took up residence in the fortress, and so it was called the city of David. He built up the city around it, from the supporting characters to the surrounding wall, while Joab restored the rest of the city. And David became more and more powerful, because the Lord Almighty was with him. These were the chiefs of David's mighty men. They, together with all Israel, gave his kingship strong support to extend it over the whole land, as the Lord had promised. This is the list of David's mighty men. Jashobiam, a Hachmanite, was chief of the officers. He raised his spear against three hundred men, whom he killed in one encounter. Next to him was Eleazar, son of Dodai, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men. He was with David at Pasdamim when the Philistines gathered there for battle. At a place where there was a field full of barley, the troops fled from the Philistines. But they took their stand in the middle of the field. They defended it and struck the Philistines down, and the Lord brought about a great victory. Three of the thirty chiefs came down to David to the rock at the cave of Adulam, while a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephaim. At that time David was in the stronghold, and the Philistine garrison was at Bethlehem. David longed for water and said, Oh, that someone would get me a drink of water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem, and carried it back to David, but he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out before the Lord. God forbid that I should do this, he said. Should I drink the blood of these men who went at the risk of their lives? Because they risked their lives to bring it back, David would not drink it. Such were the exploits of the three mighty men. Abishai, the brother of Joab, was chief of the three. He raised his spear against three hundred men whom he killed, and so he became as famous as the three. He was doubly honored above the three and became their commander, even though he was not included among them. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was a valiant fighter from Kabziel who performed great exploits. He struck down two of Moab's best men. He also went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. And he struck down an Egyptian who was seven and a half feet tall. Although the Egyptian had a spear like a weaver's rod in his hand, Benaiah went against him with a club. He snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. Such were the exploits of Benaiah, son of Jehoiada. He too was as famous as the three mighty men. He was held in greater honor than any of the thirty, but he was not included among the three. And David put him in charge of his bodyguard. The mighty men were Asahel, the brother of Joab, Elhanan, son of Dodo from Bethlehem, Shamoth, the Hararite, Helez, the Felonite, Ira, son of Ikesh from Tekoa, 
Adiezer from Anathoth, Sibekai, the Hushatite, Elai, the Ahohite, Maharai, the Netaphatite, Heled, son of Baana, the Netaphatite, Ithai, son of Rabai, from Gibeah in Benjamin, Beniah, the Pyrathonite, Hurai, from the ravines of Gaash, Abiel, the Arbatite, Asmabeth, the Baharumite, Eliaba, the Sha'albanite, the sons of Hashem, the Geizanite, Jonathan, son of Shagi, the Hararite, Ahayam, son of Sakar, the Hararite, Eliphal, son of Ur, Ether, the Mekeratite, Ahijah, the Felonite, Ezro, the Carmelite, Naarai, son of Ezbai, Joel, the brother of Nathan, Mibhar, son of Hagli, Zelech, the Ammonite, Naharai, the Berathite, the armor bearer of Joab, son of Zerowah, Ira, the Ithrite, Garab, the Ithrite, Uriah, the Hittite, Zabad, son of Alai, Adina, son of Shiza, the Reubenite, who is chief of the Reubenites, and the thirty with him, Hanan, son of Maaka, Josaphat, the Mithnite, Uzziah, the Ashtothite, Shammah, and Jael, the sons of Hotham, the Aroerite, Jediel, son of Shimri, his brother Johar, the Tizite, Eliel, the Mahavite, Jerabai, and Joshaviah, the sons of Elnaam, Ithma, the Moabite, Eliel, Obed, and Jaziel, the Mezobite. And when I hear lineages like that, I want to thank all the lonely people. Where do they all come from? All the lonely people. And there's such a long lineage, don't you think? And um, so we have, again, the recap recapitulation of David's reign as mighty man. He becomes king over Israel. The elders finally declare him king at Hebron. Prior to this, only one of the tribes recognized David as king. The other tribes uh, kind of uh, rec um, recognize the pretend king, kind of like number 46, King Ishibabeth. And uh, he was like the uh, people's choice, but uh, not even the people's choice. He was just a propped up king. And uh, he was murdered uh, in Second Samuel 4. So now all the tribes had to turn to David. And it is significant that the chronicler makes no reference for the seven years where David did reign over the southern kingdom, late, which is known later as Judah. And then the, he begins the crowning in Hebron uh, when all... Israel acknowledges his kingship. This is really David's third anointing. The first was with his family when he was young, with Samuel. The second was an anointing by the uh, tribe of Judah after the death of Saul. And the third was after the defeat of Ishibabeth. Now it's sad when Christians only recognize Jesus when things begin to crumble and their king is no longer the one on the bandwagon. So we should choose Jesus outright. Not when all the options fail. Okay, I guess as a last resort, I'll try Jesus. The elders of Israel received David's leadership because it was evident that God had called him to lead. Three characteristics of this should mark anyone who leads God's people. A leader must belong to God's people in heritage and in heart. A leader must demonstrate the capability to lead. And a leader must have the evident call from God. Now David takes control of Jerusalem, making it the capital city. To this point, Jerusalem was a small Canaanite city in the center of Israel. Some 400 years after God commanded Israel to take the whole land, the city was still in Canaanite hands. Now, this didn't sit well with David. Jerusalem became the capital city of King David's kingdom. It was a good choice because it had no prior tribal association with it, and therefore it was a good uh, base for unifying Israel. Now the geography of the city also made it easy to defend against a hostile army. In God's plan, there is almost always a hidden price, though, for greatness, often. And those who become great among God's people experience much pain and difficulty in the training or God's gym. So David's mighty men. Uh, David needed these faithful men for his success. It's important to understand that David was nothing without his mighty men, and they were nothing without him. He was their leader, but a leader is nothing without followers, and David had the mighty men to follow him. Now two of David's mighty men were Jesh, uh, Jeshobim and Eliezer, 
The son of Dodo. I like saying that, don't you? The son of Dodo. Oh, he is it? The son of Dodo. Okay, enough there. So, uh, then David's mighty men were on a mission to bring him water from his childhood desires at Bethlehem. When they heard of it, they, they risked their lives and they did it for him. And when they came back, they were probably dismayed, maybe even upset, because he poured out the water uh, to the Lord. He wouldn't drink it because these men sacrificed their lives to get there. Which shows you, David's heart, God is always first, not self-serving. And there was other accomplishments among David's mighty men. And there was an honor roll of David's mighty men, Ashael, the brother of Job. He, he was tragically killed in battle by Abner, but he was the commander of Ishabeth's armies. This is the son of Saul who tried to follow him on the throne. Uriah the Hittite, he is notable among the mighty men because he was the husband of Bathsheba. When David heard of Bathsheba's relation to Uriah and Eliam and Athopal, he should have put away every idea of adultery. It really was a kind of like uh, going into not only a hornet's trap, but also a black widow's trap or a scorpion trap. Would you put your hand in there? I don't think so. So the list of David's mighty men recorded in 2 Samuel 23 ends with the mention again of Uriah the Hittite. That always reminds, and David, I'm sure, was well aware. Well, thanks for joining us today on this Sunday, the Lord's Day, July 17th. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and until next time, should he tarry and should he desire, if the Lord wills, we'll see you again. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Thanks for tuning in.